Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you could subscribe, I'd really, really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, hit the like button, subscribe, all that stuff. It's always appreciated. Thank you very much for that. Um, right, <laughs> where to begin with this one? Um, Kiko Martinez becomes a two-weight IBF world champion by knocking out Kid Galahad, or should I say, knocking him flat. And I mean flat in a fight where he hadn't really won more than a 15 second period of any of the previous rounds. He was being completely outboxed and produced a Hail Mary punch, which effect well actually, as I'll as I'll explain if you haven't seen the fight, it was two Hail Mary punches. Um yeah, 35 years of age, uh a two-way IBF champ, super bantam, years ago, and now he's a champ again. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing turnaround, an amazing highlight reel knockout. Um, Galahad, the champion, was expected to deal with Kiko Martinez very, very easily. My personal prediction was I thought he'd stop him late. Um, no one predicted this, I don't think. I can't remember hearing anyone say they thought Martinez would win. Uh, and the fight was going right up to that point. The point of the knockout was going exactly how most people, myself included, thought the fight would go. Galahad came out. Um, he was switch hitting, looked just as comfortable as a southpaw as he did as an orthodox fighter. No problem with the port side stuff, you know, switch hit. Uh, Martinez, much shorter, shorter arms, shorter reach. Um he had one thing on his mind that was try and get close and land those big overhand rights. Be busy. Try and outwork the guy. But Galahad wasn't letting him do that. He shook Martinez badly. I think probably two minutes into the first round. Martinez was near a corner. His legs did a little stutter step when he was clocked. And so it continued. Now... In the third round, Martinez gave a hint, or hints, I should say, that he was getting closer. And I'm not sure whether this was because he just found the range, got into a little bit of a rhythm, or whether it was because Galahad was allowing him to get closer, because Galahad had no respect for his power. But certainly by the fourth round, they were getting a lot more up close and personal. And it was noticeable that although Galahad was still dominating, apart from that first round, he hadn't really hurt Martinez. He was keeping him honest, but Martinez was getting closer and letting his hands go more. And this continued right into the fifth round. And again, Galahad was winning every minute of every round. But right at the end of the fifth round, Martinez threw an, one of those... If you've ever seen him fight, and let's be honest, we've probably all seen him fight at least a dozen times. He's been around forever. He threw one of those overhand rights, those tight, compact overhand rights, a lot of power on it. It caught Galahad, bang on the button, and down he went heavy. And that was the end of the round, or towards the end of the round. It was 20 seconds left, I think. Up gets Galahad. The referee said, step to me, and he didn't really do it. I thought the ref might stop it there and then, because Galahad, although he his eyes had some semblance of clarity. His legs did not look steady. The ref let it carry on. By the time Martinez had walked across the ring and thrown another punch, the bell had gone. So you're thinking, OK, he's got a minute to recover. Can he do it? And again, Galahad was sitting in the corner listening to Dominic Ingle and was thinking, uh, he appeared to be thinking, um, well, not a great deal. There seemed to be a sort of, not a vacant look in his eyes. He just seemed shocked. Who can blame him? And Ingle was telling him, get back on the jab and, you know, don't don't get, don't get allow him to come to you. Keep on the jab. But there was a, there was a, there was a, a sort of vacant look to, to Galahad. And I think that, I, pretty, I think it was shock. If I had to guess anyway, I mean, I don't know for certain, but it looked to me like he was just plain shocked at what had happened. The bell goes for the sixth round, and six seconds in, Martinez just steps to him, lands a virtually identical punch, which absolutely flattens Galahad. 
he is out. And the referee don't even bother counting, waves it off. And that's all she wrote. An amazing win, a highlight reel knockout for Kiko Martinez, who is not renowned for having one punch power, but by Christ, he had it in this fight. Um, so when you think about it, I mean, it's it's an astonishing win for Martinez. It's it, As I said before, it makes him a two-weight champion. I think he's he's up there with Spain's finest fighters. But the one thing that it, it really highlights is that, you know, the guy's got 10 defeats on his record. He's like a Derek Chisora type. Defeats don't mean anything to him. He'll fight anyone. He has fought anyone. Both his world titles were won on the road years apart. He won his first title against Johnson Romero in America, stopped the guy in six rounds. He's won this in Britain. He's travelled the world. He's been in Britain God knows how many times. He lost to Zelfa Barrett was it earlier this year. And supposedly he was going to have a rematch, but Eddie couldn't. Eddie Hearn couldn't find a, a first defence for, for Galahad. So he said, well, does Martinez want it? And Kiko, who'd had a win since the, the Barrett defeat, which was controversial, you know, he could make a case for him beating Zelfa Barrett. He'd had one eight round points win. Um, he said, yeah, I'll take it. Of course I'll take it. And didn't he half take it? I mean, amazing. The, don't forget, Martinez, you can go back over 10 years. You know, the guy lost twice to Rendell Monroe on points. What, 2008, 2009, I think it was. One was a... The first one was a majority decision and the second one was a unanimous decision. He lost twice to Frampton. One of those was a knockout. He lost his his last world title to Frampton on points. He's lost in five rounds to Gary Russell Jr. He lost in five to... Who else was it? He lost, he lost, in, he lost twice in five rounds. I can't remember the other guy. Um... Gary Russell Jr. Oh, Leo Santa Cruz. Yeah, stopped him in five. He got wiped out in two rounds by Scott Quigg. So this guy has had... He's had those are his four knockout defeats. He's had ten defeats in total. It doesn't phase him. It keeps coming back. And you'd think he was, you know, 45. He's actually only 35. Amazing career this guy's had. And if anyone deserves you know, applaud it for what he's achieved. It's got to be Kiko Martinez because he doesn't give a damn about defeats to him. He's a fighting man. He's a prize fighter, a proper prize fighter, a throwback, you might say. And all credit to him. As, as for Kid Galahad, there was talk before the fight and after the fight about the weight. He struggled to make the weight. Tony Bellew and Lee Wood were on the DAZN panel talking about this issue. And Bellew said, he, you know, Galahad has, the last two fights, Galahad has looked horrendous on the scales. Because when when Galahad won the title, it was against uh, Jazza Dickens, who's, I think, managed by Tony Bellew. So Bell, Bellew was up there looking at him close, and he said he looked horrendous on the scales then. He looked horrendous this time. He struggled to make the weight. So he'll, he'll probably move up. He's 31, so he can come back if he wants to. But you've got a feel for the guy, in, in a sense, because he spent years and years trying to win a world title. Controversial loss to Josh Warrington. Many thought he won. Um, he gets the title and he loses it in his first defence. In a, by a again a highlight real knockout. Amazing, amazing fight. Amazing conclusion. Fight was one sided. You know, every, it was going exactly as you thought it would go, and then bang. And probably that's one of the reasons why we love boxing, right? But, uh, yeah, did you see the fight? What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments section. Um, bad, bad night for Eddie Hearn. Because Terry Harper got iced as well. So he thinks it's a really bad, bad night for him. Matchroom to zone. Um, but yeah, I'll do I'll do a video on the Terry Harper thing because that's worth doing. I think that was that had a really shocking ending as well. But yeah, let me know your comments below. Thanks for tuning in again. If you if you're not uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you could do so. I'd really appreciate it. But thanks for tuning in and yeah, peace to you.